In the spirit of the H-Team's More Love film series, Green Mountain Z pays tribute to an intelligent, artistic community of zombie lovers right here in Vermont. Looking below their decaying surface, this film attempts to dig deeper into the reasons for the ever-increasing popularity of zombies and how they relate to the stresses and pressures of life. As the popularity of the zombie grows to monstrous proportions, this issue has the state of Vermont at odds, revealing what we love and hate about zombies. That's what this More Love film is all about. I laughed at it, but she said, um, you know, all this stuff looks really familiar. My, my brother used to make dolls that look like this, and he's in prison now. <laughs> you don't have to go far, just go down to, to Cherry Street, and you will see zombies on Cherry Street. They are among us already. It was Ebert's review of The Night of the Living Dead where it was a matinee, a kiddie matinee, and parents dropped their kids off, and he wrote about how these kids were traumatized by this movie. Now it's so mainstream, it's, it's insane. There's a huge cultural phenomenon going in the interest in zombies. What is there not to love about zombies? <laughs> There's enough of that in the world without putting on TV. I, I think an open mind is a highly adaptive, pre-apocalyptic attitude to have. I want to see things that traumatize me. <laughs> not in real life, but in movies and in comics and with music. It's taken a whole new turn, and, and I've been a fan of zombie movies since I, as far back as I can remember. I don't really like exposing my children to super violent stuff. I don't expose them to that. Yeah, I don't think there's much to like about zombies, except in watching their extermination. I think people love to be scared, and zombies are scary. The Walking Dead. I think the same. I think everybody oh, loves the show, and it's, it's just... It's yeah. like a reversal craving for religion. So for people who are not religious, who don't believe in an afterlife, it gives them an idea of an afterlife without having to commit to a religion. I just don't die and go into the ground. I come back as a really badass character that comes after things and attacks. I really believe they're a secret part of everybody who enjoys them. They can say they hate them all they want, but just like people who watch, you know, car accidents and, you know, and say they hate it, but at the same time they stop, it's the same idea. I know no one really wants to admit it, but I think the people that are obsessed with zombies are really interested in anarchy and lawlessness. <laughs> Violence is human nature, and this gives people an outlet so you don't feel too bad if they're a zombie watching flesh splatter. How's that? It's, you know, a, a pumpkin. You take a pumpkin and you smash a pumpkin and it, it just splatters. And there's something, let's face it, there's something elegant about that. There's something beautiful about watching those seeds and that flesh, you know, explode. And that's the aesthetic appeal, I think, in, in, in the zombie film. It's kind of interesting watching people run away from zombies because it, it, it's seemingly easy. Monsters are cunning and they're clever and they're often agile. But the zombie, you can kind of you know, shuck and drive and you're past one. But then the problem, of course, is there's so many. It's actually really wonderful to be committedly ugly, like off-puttingly ugly. To, to curl your lip and to expose your teeth and to have your flesh rotting off when women put so much effort into being appealing, so much, so many hours into looking nice. Um, the freedom from that is, is fantastic. It's a, it's a great holiday. In uh, 2009, we did a, a zombie scenario and we had people with their backs to this hole in the ground. We sent zombies up through the hole. And we didn't really, we had them go really quietly until one of the characters turned around and says, they're coming through the floor, run! And we, there was this 
railing that everyone had to go around to get to the hallway that led you out. And we had so many people diving in peril of their physical safety through this railing. It's the lure of horror. It's why people pay their money. They want to forget themselves. They want to be in the grip of their most primal instincts. It's a rush. Are you a zombie or what? Yes. You are? I'm, I'm being nice and waiting until the, the signal change. <laughs> I'm a very nice zombie. You are a really considerate zombie. In 1967 and 68, they made a movie called Night of the Living Dead. This movie punched a hole in the pop culture. I mean, I went with two of my most beloved high school friends, University of Vermont, an evening showing of this movie. There's a turning point in the middle of the movie, and it's the first time movies ever showed on screen cannibalism. The ghouls are reaching into the truck, and we're seeing them, you know, eating limbs, fighting over loops of intestines. I mean, just horrible images. My friend Alan was furious and bolted out of the theater. And I had to go back and beg him, please don't leave, you're our, dr you're our ride home, please don't leave, I have to see the end of this. I go back in and sit down with Jill, and we stay with the movie until a little girl who's been bitten by the zombies comes back as one. Her mother finds her eating her father. The daughter picks up a trowel and stabs the mother to death. Jill broke down into tears, and I had to lead her out of the theater where my pissed off friend Alan Finn is sitting. Seeing that movie in 1970, where a college age audience came out of there looking like they'd been hit with a board. I mean, that was a genuinely shocking, terrifying movie. Something shifted where it became okay to show that on TV. And now we're into two or three generations that have grown up with those kind of movies being okay. Even my children are super into zombies yeah. though, and they're eight and 11, they're like zombie fanatics. I don't really like exposing my children to super violent stuff. I don't expose them to that, even with Disney movies. They're blowing each other up. So I think we are a culture that likes to saturate our children with violence starting at a very early age. The kind of things people see on the new episode of The Walking Dead wouldn't have been allowed on American screens at the end of the 60s. It's quite gruesome. So I can understand why there would be people that would just be like, oh my God, this is horrific. There's a, there's a little extra weight that comes with being the first people to use a certain campaign. Why in the hell do they put stuff like that on TV? There's enough of that in the world without putting it on TV. I oh, Because I'm not a zombie fan, I guess I'm not part of that clique and would put any credibility on zombies. We've got some negative feedback. People wondering why we have it on the, on the television with little kids able to watch it. That it was a little disturbing to some people or to their kids. Marie Sendak's Where the Wild Things Are. First children's book where the monsters, the boogeymen, aren't scary to the kids. The kid is sort of bonding with the monsters. And that was a book that was banned and criticized for that. Parents had a really hard time with that in the early 60s. And that's a breakthrough book. It's like it, it was a major cultural shift from the boogeyman being something you use to scare kids into behaving to the boogeyman being a kid's friend. I loved being scared and, you know, I loved and hated it at the same time. And being scared when you're a kid is about just pushing boundaries and, and seeing sort of how far you can go with yourself or in the world around you or in your imagination. I don't necessarily feel that I grew up that way and I wish that I would have been pushed a little bit more into things that I was a little more afraid of. I don't think it's good to shelter kids from terrible things because at some point in their life they're going to encounter terrible things and they have to be ready to deal with it. So I don't know. Why not let them explore like where those boundaries are and how they feel about things in a fantasy realm first? I was in a commercial and I played a zombie. I got to wear all this scary makeup and I like scary things. There's more parking. It's over there. 
Thank, Thank you. you. It was a lovely afternoon. What makes them fun is that they are scary and if they weren't scary, it wouldn't be very exciting. Probably my richest zombie experience was with Ella being a zombie and seeing the commercials. Um, so, but given that level of exposure, I think because my children don't really have that super broad context, it wasn't that scary to Ella. But I don't, I mean, I'm not gonna, you know, rent the next zombie movie for them. That commercial on the six o'clock news to me is innocuous as opposed to what's actually on the six o'clock news. I think more about the pressures and the stresses and the aggravations of the world turning you into something that you just don't want to become. Are you going to become so stressed about this prospect of buying a car or whatever it may be that you become a zombie? You lose what makes you human. All these different genres of zombie movies, you know, some of them seem to be more about like a bigger statement on our culture, like how people are just, you know, zombies and just consuming and consuming and consuming and are just kind of dead and soulless inside. What you see in the zombie film are the invisible suddenly visible. It's the same sort of thing that we often experience in the city. The problem is, I think, we just don't see them. They're, they remain invisible to, to us. They're, they're the, the diseased, they're the homeless, they're the disenfranchised. Where are we right now? We're in the middle of a zombie apocalypse. Whenever there's a traumatic event that happens, people are brought closer together. I think that is a huge aspect of the whole zombie thing because you have to be together. You have to stick together. You have to work with each other. Um, you are technically a family. And if you're not, you get eaten and die a miserably painful death. We've experienced a lot of brinkmanship from our government. Um, we're looking at a lot of unsustainable things. And I think that that has made zombies very accessible for modern storytelling as we try to answer some of those questions. Like, what are we gonna do when the environment blows up? What are we gonna do when everybody's gone? When all our systems are gone? When everything's broken down? We will sit for hours and, and figure out what would we do. And I think that's a big part of why zombies are popular too is because this happens what would you do? When the zombie apocalypse occurs. I'm going to find a source of food which is not Costco because everybody's going to go to Costco. I'm not going to go to Costco. Find a Walmart. Yeah. Walmart's going to be a Get the jugs yeah. of water. Yeah, yeah no, no, avoid big places. I'm going to get a lot of M80s. I think I'd want a flamethrower. Um, some napalm would be awesome. The whole running and gunning isn't going to do it. You have to basically create your own ecosystem to survive. Being in Vermont, I think we're a little more prepared. I would just run screaming right into the crowd and just let them consume me and like not even give it a fight. Or I'm going to really rock at the zombie apocalypse. I'm going to go to the mall, I'm going to find some kids, I'm going to eat their brains and I'm going to have a great time. Trying to explain the pleasure of a horror story is like trying to explain the sublimity of love to a frigid old man. You know, it's kind of like trying to explain roller coasters to people who don't like to get on a roller coaster. There is a, a thrill ride element to it. There is a fun element to it. Um, but some of us like confronting bad things about life and death through horror stories and fiction. Um, some of us like um, testing ourselves with fiction and with movies and with fantasy and so on. Some of us like um, zombies. There was a 16-year-old who was part of the zombie horde um, and she was in a, a, a stage combat situation There was a security guard and she had to grab this security guard's gun and wrest it away from her and scream in her face. And she couldn't do it. She'd take a deep breath and she'd squeak and then she'd dissolve in, in giggles. Um, and so I, I, I pulled her aside and I said, and I said, you know, your partner needs you to do this. Your partner needs you to be scary enough that she'll be too frightened to get that gun back from you. Um, so you need to help her have a great performance. You need to be powerful. It's okay for you to be that powerful and that scary. You can bully your partner. She needs you to do it. And I know you have it in you. I know you can be that powerful. 
And she was, she's like, I can't, I can't, I can't. And she's like, no, you can. She's like, okay, okay, I'm gonna try. We went back into the room. The moment came. She took this deep breath and she roared right in that security guard's face. And she, the security guard was so frightened, she fell over. <laughs> she grabbed the gun. You know, the fight ended and everyone who was watching was just standing back on their heels. And we all started cheering and gave her this huge group hug. She never went back to being a squeaky, shy, 16-year-old girl who was too afraid to offend anybody. She always was able to hit that level of loud, that level of scary, that level of power. And I feel so privileged to be able to offer her an opportunity to be something that she really didn't think she could be, but she could.